all models are broken, but some are useful. Does this mean we should just give up on all of the models? Well, all models have a set of assumptions and limitations. For example, in response to the power law model, Julio Marino, who's head of research at CryptoQuant, highlighted that when conducting a linear regression with autocorrelation present in the residuals, which are the prediction errors, this can result in underestimating the standard errors and leads to an inflated R squared or correlation value, giving a misleading impression of the model's accuracy. This is actually pretty funny because this is very similar to some of the criticism that Plan B has received with his stock to flow model. Since Bitcoin's stock to flow ratio is literally a component of time because halvings occur every four years, both models have had pretty similar criticism. What's even more funny is when you pull up a picture of the models, it's historically almost the exact same prediction. In fact, there's probably a pretty high correlation between both of the model's predictions from 2010 to 2024. Here you can see the stock to flow on the white line and the power law on the gray line and the actual price of Bitcoin as the red dots. They're almost all the same thing so far. Of course, over the coming 20 years is where they will diverge. The stock to flow model continues exponentially increasing and the power law model continues to parabolically increase, less future returns than the stock to flow exponential model. Another funny thing to think about is if either of the models are actually correct, then the market would eventually price it in. Why hold a traditional 60-40 portfolio if there are new models of reality that flawlessly explain Bitcoin will have a 40% Kager or more over the coming years? So th does this mean that you know both models are worthless? Some would say yes. I would argue probably no. Like I've mentioned before, I do think halvings play a role in the appreciation of Bitcoin. They are a core component of 21 million Bitcoin. Without halvings, Bitcoin has perpetual inflation with a block subsidy of 50 BTC every 10 minutes for all of eternity. Do I think that M2 growth also plays a large role? Of course. Do I think that Bitcoin's price will continue to grow over time? Also, of course. Do I think that either model can perfectly predict specific dates? No. Now, of course, I don't have a Stanford PhD and I wouldn't classify myself as a true statistics expert. However, I did study analytics in graduate school, so I am familiar with some of these concepts. Graduate level econometrics was probably the most difficult class I've ever taken, but I think I still got an A minus or a B. And one of my key takeaways from that class was how difficult it is to model collective human action and markets. In fact, it's probably impossible to do it perfectly. So what are the models useful for? Well, I think they offer somewhat reasonable predictions or expectations. It's better than nothing to know where Bitcoin's future Kager might be. However, while I agree that Bitcoin's scarcity does drive its price, and while I agree that Bitcoin will increase over time, I'm more team sailor. All of your models will be broken, even if the ideas underlying the models are in fact useful. In the end, Bitcoin is going up.